Hey guys, Tom here. Um, unfortunately, lost the footage for this episode, but we still got the audio, so we got that at least. Um, so look forward to that. Um, also, go check out the TikTok we have, Hops and Bobs Podcast on TikTok, where I'm doing a whole bunch of uh, shorter reviews if you're into that. So enjoy. Alright guys, welcome back to episode 54 of the Hop and Bob podcast. I am Pete Trump. I'm Joe. I'm Mike. I'm Trevor. And today we are doing our Guilty Pleasures episode. So we have each brought uh, four, I uh, think four, right? Four each. Four uh, Guilty Pleasure songs that we uh, we are a little embarrassed to enjoy, but uh, we, uh, I don't know, I think we all like them. And um, to pair, we have brought our Guilty Pleasure uh, drinks of choice. Yes. So um, I have the uh, the Twisted Teas. Um, Joe has the White Claw Mangoes. Oh, yeah. Mike has the, uh, the Dogfish Head. Which one is that? Slightly Mighty. Slightly Low Mighty? Low Calorie Delicious. IPA. Okay. Delicious. And, Lost um, Trevor brought the, the Natter Days, Natural Light Natter Days. So, we're, uh, we're excited to, to jump in. We're going to do a little bit of a, a taste test of everyone's drinks, and then we're going to just have one for ourselves, just because we like them. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be, uh, it. good because we all bought a six-pack of them or whatever, and we get to take the rest of them home. So, <laughs> there you know, go. So, so yeah. we're, we're gonna Speaking go. Of, I owe you money. That's right. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yes, yeah, Saturdays he, must have cost I'll what, you up. eight, nine dollars. It was <laughs> twelve pack for ten bucks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, you want to start with the drinks? Who wants to? Yeah. Who, wants to start? who? Who? Um. What drink are we starting with first? <laughs> well, I'm just gonna throw it out there. All right. We have three drinks to taste test. Yeah. Four songs to go by. Mm-hmm. Do we crack our own? Enjoy a few sips. Start with a song. Song two, around the drink. Song okay. three. Song four. That's a reasonable. Yeah, well, Sounds I, good. I'm, I'm just okay. thinking Sounds logistically, good. right? That should be Let's twist off. Sounds right. solid. Oh yeah. For all you hating in the comments, Cheers, we don't ladies. care. Cheers. To being guilty. So maybe we explain. Right. Are we gonna explain why now, or I feel maybe when it's time to sample our drink, we can kind of explain why. Oh, it's so delicious. So the the first four in the playlist are Joe's guilty pleasures. The second four are Mike's. The third four are mine. And the last four are Trevor's, right? Yeah, okay. I just kind of dropped them in that way. So do you want to start with yours? Since yeah. Since the first one in there? So yeah, we'll each do a table. song. We'll go around table. Yeah. We'll so I'll start with table. one of mine. Sure. Round, well, it's rectangular table. Oh, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, God, I don't know which one to, to talk about first. I guess I'll go in order. Yeah. Um, yeah. Levels by Avicii. Ooh. This is one of my R. guilty R. pleasure songs. Yes, R.I.P. Um, so this song, you know, this is like 2010s EDM in a nutshell. This is the EDM song from the 2010s. And the reason why it's a guilty pleasure of mine is because it just brings me back to like post-college going out on weekends, like Stamford, Sono, South Norwalk, Mm -hmm. New Haven with my friends to the bars and like just the rage room, like, you know, like. Just raging, partying, and having a good time. Yep. And this song would always come on, and when the DJ came out and played it, like the place just went crazy. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's more of a nostalgic thing for me. Uh, but also, I always loved imagining like a band playing it, and then like putting a drum beat on it too. Okay. So like sometimes I'll play the drums along to it, and it I kind of have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this is this is definitely a guilty pleasure. When he died. I found out while we were in school, and uh, last period, I or at the end of the school day, I blasted this out of my classroom. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, as like a little tribute. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, my only question is, was there a reason you went with the original version rather than the radio edited? Because I, I, the original version has that build-up that EDM does, mm-hmm. like it... You know, it's all it's like that building up and then the, the come down. Okay. I thought the radio edit kind of... Cheapened it a little bit for me. I, I okay. enjoy that longer build up in the in the beginning, but I mean, if you listen to the single version anyway or the radio edit, yeah, you'll get the gist of it. But for me, it's the original version I like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Guilty pleasure number one. <laughs> yeah. Song. Any reaction? Solid song. Yeah. No. no, no. Ew. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was some of that, but not for this song. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of that in this episode. Oh, yeah. It's guilty pleasure. It's the nature cool. of the episode. Yeah. Um, cool. No, I, yeah. Yeah, I like knew I, the song. It was good. Got no issues with it. Yeah. 
I mean, I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to it. I think I prefer the radio edit just because it's a bit shorter. Yeah. I don't know if I can, can do five and a half minutes of Avicii. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Mm-hmm. I, I understand. Yeah. You should feel bad for like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do um, you want to go think, next? Yeah, I think it would be Tom's turn. Sure, I will go next. Um, I will start with uh, Cascada, Every Time We Touch. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, what a song. I mean. <laughs> yes, so this this song is like the definition of a guilty pleasure song. We've had this conversation, too, before. Yeah, yeah. When like you just first, hanging out. Yeah, when you first mentioned this, uh, this idea of us doing this. First song you said? Yeah, this is the first idea that popped into my mind, and there's a reason for that. Um, the song is like a... Like a like a good time feeling like it, it really boosts the the what was it, the uh, yeah. serotonin in my brain mm-hmm. um and um the the first example i have of that was uh we had a spring fling event in 2019 when i was back at school <laughs> <laughs> you, you really do bob your head and listen to it no, yeah. um and we were like the loudest apartment we had like a dj set up in our in our apartment we were like the subwoofers on the bottom and then the stands for the the, okay, the high nice. ones on the top so um we really were just like a big music fans in our apartment so um, and I, I set up a playlist for Spring Fling 2019, if you dig deep enough into my Spotify, it's somewhere in there. Um, and I put this song on there, and, you know, when I had to leave, I would just leave my computer open for whoever wanted to use it. And so anytime this song came on, people would just skip it immediately. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I did definitely get some, some side-eye looks when I was walking by where the song was playing, but I, I just love this song. It just gets me going. I don't know, that's something about yeah. it just puts me in a better mood. I always thought this was older. Yeah, no, it's I like it was an older song that they like made into an EDM version. Oh, maybe. I mean, this. Oh, well, this album came out in 2010, but yeah, I think it was I before then. I yeah. think it was like early 2000s. I thought like her song, like n- minus the EDM factor, was like a 90s song. Maybe. I don't know. 2006. I, I, 2006. Yeah, that's what okay. it says on here. Yeah, I could be wrong. I, I it just, it always I gave like an it. older impression for me. Yeah. It kind of gives you like the what is love impression. Yes, yes. You know, which right. is like a throwback. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like more house, yeah. yeah maybe, right. I mean, I'm not sure, but I mean, um, I can look it up. Yeah, I mean, this is just another go-to. You know what's what's yeah. good about this song, though? That whole like, because every time we talk, yeah. I mean, that's like 20 seconds in. Yeah. Boom, it's there. Right. Like yeah, there, you don't have to wait Like with long. the Avicii, we had to wait a while. Right, like, Even with right. the radio version, there's a little bit of yeah. a build-up. This yeah. was just like... Oh look, I'm singing. Cause every time we talk, yeah. like, it's just like whoa. <laughs> that 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 huge like uh, you just bass hits you're just really get you there. Going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very uh, very dance dance revolution. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's German techno and Euro dance. Okay, that's yeah. that's Cascada. Okay, so yeah, that's my uh, that's my first one. It was nice. just an instant thought of like, yeah, no, this song is. Oh yeah, so- something I'm embarrassed about liking, but I like it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, nice. you got. Three other guys who are kind of with you on this one. Like, yeah, okay. Oh, I, this yeah. is, this yeah, is good. I'm about to go out after this <laughs> Thirsty Thursday. Yeah. Try right, Trev. What do you got Trevor. for Trevor. I got, uh, well, so I noticed that there was a lot of dance, right? Mm-hmm. You guys seem to choose a lot of dance for their guilty pleasures. Yeah. I think guilty pleasure, I, I just can't escape cheesy 80s music. So oh, yeah. I chose Autograph, Turn Up the Radio. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... <laughs> This is like a dark horse, like '80s song. Yeah. It's not the most popular band, no. but when yeah. you hear the song, you know it. Yeah, you yeah. know, you know which era this was written. Oh yeah, in, oh know? yeah. I yeah. mean, it's uh, it's got all of the '80s in it. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. it's got the the, the synthesizer. It's oh, got yeah. that lead in. It's got like the the that fade. voice. The yeah, the fade. Yeah. The, the, the the scream at the end. But wow, yeah, you know, it's, it's got Very all of the ask. '80s in. One song, the group vocals and the you chorus. Know, you know, it's got that, yeah, that feel good. Turn yeah. up the radio. You know, I mean, it's just, it is the quintessential feel good '80s song. Yeah, and that, like, uh, fake snare sound. Yeah, I, yeah, oh yeah. I yeah. can't help but turn up the radio every time it comes on. It's on my cool. favorites in my charger. You know, I mean, it's, <laughs> okay. The charger, you know? yes. <laughs> I want to hear this <laughs> blasting out of the yeah. charger, seeing you drive. Yeah. Beats yeah. my dress. Yes. <laughs> I love it's, it. It's it's. Seen those uh, those speakers many times. So. Yeah, oh. yeah. Um, this song sounds like uh, what's that song? Hot blooded. Is it by Hot Foreigner? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of has a similar Foreigner. Foreigner. Yeah, it's a good track. I'm not an '80s fan. Yeah, like, I I can listen to it's it. Fair. I know the song. I'm gonna sing along. Right. I would never go out of my way to listen to this song. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Try not to. Try not to. <laughs> 
Uh, They're lost. I guess so. <laughs> all right, it has a lot of like Def Leppard vibes. Yeah, so it's taking all those yeah. elements. Yeah, and I can't. I don't. I'm not a yeah. Def Leppard fan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. it happens. Yeah. So uh, Michael, right. Michael, huh, what, what are you what going do I with? What do you want to start about? with? Um, you know what? I'm gonna go with gold. Okay. Gold this one was Kiara. an interesting choice. Okay. I, I did not expect you to like this one. So I don't know what it is about this song. I just feel like it's got like such a driving like backbeat to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I love her voice. She's got a very good voice. Yeah. Um, that like reversed vocals. The it's just, it was kind of, yeah. yeah it's it was just kind chopped. of cool. Like, yeah. and I've always seen this, and I know I told Joe this. Like, I've always seen like I could see like a hard rock metal cover of this song. Okay. Like I don't know why I've always had that in my head, and it's just catchy. Like it's just, yeah. Yeah. I don't know any other songs by her except for the one she does with Linkin Park. Oh, heavy. Um, heavy. Heavy. Yeah. Which also Which is that, a, it's just it's a, a pretty good song. song. Yeah. For a ballad by them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's literally the only two places I've ever heard her. Yeah, those are her only two really big hits. She has a song with like Wiz Khalifa and a couple other people, but mm-hmm. yeah, this is her only album too. Yeah, I just I don't know. I don't even think I listened to the album. I think I just okay. Well, twenty twenty. So I mean, yeah. she's a bit of a newer artist. Twenty twenty. Only last year. Oh, this this, is, this album it did at least. I don't know about this single. Yeah, this single. This bad. is old. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I remember you I wanted. Really Actually, two of these songs I knew you were going to pick because you, you wanted us to, like, try to like, figure see it out. See if we could figure yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just never panned. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I always found the choppy vocals to be, like, a little annoying. Okay. But overall, the song the song's good. I, right. I This is a, a mic guilty pleasure. Yeah. Okay. It, it's not, like, a mainstream song. It has kind of a, an edge to it. Yeah. But it isn't a song you normally listen to. Yeah. So I, I think... Yeah, it definitely fits in. Okay. Gold. Yeah. So, uh, what uh, what drink are we going with now? Oh, did you guys on? No, no. I mean, I, I really don't have anything. To add. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of generic. I didn't really stand out to me. Yeah, yeah it wasn't. When I stopped listening to it, I forgot that I even heard it. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so sure. that, yeah, I, I guess sure. back to me, so I'll do my sure, drink. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. so I brought no to rules. the episode <laughs> with no rules here at the Hops and Bops podcast. I brought with me my definite guilty pleasure drink. It is White Claw, but the mango flavor. Um, if I don't want to drink beer, I'm drinking this. Okay. Um, I I. I've been known to dabble with a seltzer or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. And um, we've we've got a couple of them over there if you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, those, dabble. Uh, yeah, those are uh, it's those are retired. Five. Yeah, point five. Um, yeah, so I wanted to bring this for you guys today. So I'll crack open a new can and we can give you guys a little taste and see what you think. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm not a uh, white claw man myself. So yes, you just, don't like seltzers. You've said I'm not it. a seltzer man. Even I, if it's not alcohol. I absolutely just love the idea of that. Don't meme. feel like you need a skimp, Joe, because I like this one too. Right? Really? Okay. I mean, there you go. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know how much you want. So. Just, we got a whole can to get rid of, so. Yeah. Um, I love the meme that says. Uh, oh, yeah, you don't like seltzers, it. Uh, <laughs> seltzers. Tastes like TV static while someone else is yelling the fruit from the other room. <laughs> It's not nearly as good as the meme that's got Stone Cold Steve Austin that says every time you drink a seltzer, Stone Cold Steve Austin is disappointed in you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that is good. Here's the disappointing Steve. Yes. yes. That's fair. All right, not bad. Yeah. I love I love this. Not bad. I'm usually more of a black cherry guy. Yeah. I yeah. do the I well, do the fruit punch truly. We've got black cherry over there. <laughs> The fruit punch trulies are good. Yeah, um, I don't like yeah. the fruit punch trulies. Those really? are too no. oh, they're too sweet and too okay. artificial. If but I'm, I mean, if it's the only drink, I will drink I it. You. But yeah, I'm with Joe. If I'm going seltzer, I'm going White Claw. Yeah, okay. you know? there White Claw. I've tried other brands. I've tried other flavors. White Claw just they just they just hit it. But I do alternate between mango and black cherry. But okay. black cherry is just so typical, and. I do like mango slightly more, so I wanted to bring mango today. I will say the mango versions are better than the other versions of seltzers yeah. that I've had from them. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's just something in the back half that just tastes like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it just it it's tastes TV like static. a it tastes like a void. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it's like I don't drink seltzer water normally, but I'll drink a white claw 
It's less carbonated than normal non-alcoholic seltzer. Yeah. I like the mango flavor. It's one of my favorites. But they got tangerine, yeah. black cherry, lime. I mean, the I blackberry like flavor. Ooh, blackberry. A one. That's a good one. one. Yep. I've really got the, the variety pack number three sitting in my yep. fridge right now. You there know? you go. I mean, it's, huh? It is, uh, it, it's the standard for seltzer. It doesn't have like an overwhelming taste. Hence the TV static comments, but <laughs> it's uh, to me it's it's good. It's refreshing. So my next guilty pleasure song, I guess I'll just go right in order. It's uh, "I Want It That Way" by Backstreet Boys. Mm -hmm. This I believe is not by Steel Panther. No, uh, no, they, they do cover, cover it. Cover. Yeah. Yeah. They did cover it. Yeah, okay. I believe it. I believe it. Great. This is, I mean, I think part of the definition of a guilty pleasure. I mean. It's a boy band song. It's from the 90s. A lot of Guilty Pleasure songs are from the 90s. Was Tom even born yet? I don't know. What year did this come out? This sure. was... It was middle... I mean, elementary school for us. I mean, the album was 99. 99. I was so born. Millennium. Okay. I was, yeah, I was alive. You were, you were alive. I was kicking it. Yeah. I was shitting my pants. It, it's just a, a good... I mean, God, who doesn't sing along to this song? You know... It's true. Is it a fantastic song? No. But it just reminds me of good times and... I, I don't know. I just feel like whoever I'm with, you know, when that octave change happens, we're all singing it. Uh, I wouldn't be. Uh, uh, and the music change, video. Yeah, the, key the key change. That's it. Sorry. You know don't me. Get, I, no, I got you. I only can count to four, if that. Um, <laughs> count to four. <laughs> that took me a second. That was good. Uh, and then the music video, too, when they're on the plane, and then Blink-182 mocked that in their All the Small Things video. Um, okay. Yeah. So, I, I mean, yeah, I, I like this song. It just reminds me of good times. And uh, for I had a little boy band phase when I was a kid. I, I, I got I, that. I think that, I own yeah. this album as an elementary I, school. I, I think I do, too, and I have I another one as well. Yeah. I got that impression from you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, I, I liked, like, teams when I was a kid. That's why I liked the Power Rangers. I liked Nominated the, for three Grammys, this song. Yeah. yeah. Really? Did it win it? Uh, just as nominated. So <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> probably the song? I bet the album won something. Because um, I remember for the Christmas uh, uh, episode we did, we brought uh, one of their songs, didn't you? In Sync. In Sync, my apologies. I'm kind of oh, the Christmas and Sync song. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But um, I, I like the song. I remember when I was younger, I remember singing it. When it was uh, still somewhat relevant, so it's not bad. Yeah, I can understand. This is this is a good guilty pleasure. Uh, yeah, uh, guilty song. pleasure. Yeah, uh, exactly. China in 2011 banned it from their internet. Uh, is that right? Why? Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. Used yeah. to like torture people. It was released without the being subjected to its mandatory screening process of China's government, mm -hmm. and so they, yeah, they blocked it. Wow, China's deprived of boy band music. Yeah. Said that the end of the recording sessions, and it was according to Carlson, inspired by Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. Really? Really? I, in what way? Did not get that impression. I don't know. This song? Ooh, Tom, I'm curious on how good your ear is. What key is it in? Hold on, I gotta go back. I'm listening to another song already. Uh, I'm just curious because, and the only reason I'm curious is because this is telling you what key it's in. Right. So I'm just curious if you're. I did not get a Metallica vibe no, out of this not song. Not at all. No. Um, actually. Oh, I think you're an A it. somewhere in that area. It's an A. There you go. Okay. Call A major. Yep. Later switches to B major and then to yeah. C sharp. Okay. The key okay. All right. So I'm gonna have to listen to this back to back with Metallica and nothing else. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we're gonna hear anything that <laughs> changes our mind. But I'm surprised they got that. Uh, That's good. Well, I'm pretty, pretty impressed. Well, well, I am. Well, look at me. It's I'm, it's the song one of the songs guy. of the era. As yeah, my sister had the biggest crush on Nick Carter, I've heard this song quite a bit. So yeah, it was a song. It's yep, it's the song, and it was in the late '90s, and just the sign of the times. It. it was yeah. it. Yep. Tom, that is me next, right? Hold yep. on, I gotta look up the the name of this next one. Okay, I got it. So, um, <laughs> my next one is by a uh, uh, so. Our definitions of guilty pleasures were a little bit different, I think, because you guys went a bit more on the well-known okay. route. Mm -hmm. I just went with songs that I know that if I showed someone else, I would be embarrassed to show them. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, so I went with this artist called Kiari Pamu Pamu from Japan. Mm -hmm. This song is uh, called Ninja Re Bang Bang, <laughs> which uh, I did not know before today, um, but it's the fifth single released by her, released in 2013. Um, certified Platinum 
It's it's a pretty popular song. Mm-hmm. Um, I know about it. I, actually, I don't remember how I knew about this one song, but I know she was pretty popular. Um, I know one of the guys, Ninja, who streamed a lot on Twitch a couple years ago. He mm-hmm. had a song by her that he danced to when he won games. That's not how I know about her, but I think that's what made her somewhat popular. And uh, the song was called Pon Pon or something like that. But um, one day I was just going through her stuff, and I found this song. And uh, it's really good. I really enjoyed the song quite a bit. Um, it's totally in a different language, so that barrier is a bit tough to, to, to go across. But um, it's, it's catchy as fuck for me. And I'll just catch myself just, like, humming along to it, because obviously I can't sing to it. Um... I definitely get some weird looks for blasting this in the car with my windows down, but that doesn't stop me from doing it. Um, it, it is a little bit childish in some of the ways that the instrumentation plays with it, but I like all of the weird synthetic sound palettes that it, it plays along with. Um, her voice is really clean and sweet without being too pushy. Um, and another just pure dopamine booster for me. So, And I understand if you find it weird. <laughs> but too bad. That's why we're bringing these songs. <laughs> yeah. in. I, I, Thoughts? I, don't know. I, I almost feel like you have to be having sex with a stuffed animal while you listen to it or something. <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's like four minutes of a video game yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, that is just strange. So to put the dissenting opinion in, uh, mm-hmm. this style of music is actually very popular in Japan. Yeah. And it's something that you will commonly hear both like in the streets and in um, like uh, uh, either uh, an arcade or a uh, pachinko, which is yep. like a, a yeah. Japanese version of a slot machine place. Pretty much, yeah. I you know, know, they play this sort of stuff all the time and it's on the radio and it's it's a popular style of music. It's, it's not the first time I've heard this and uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Tom with this. I didn't mind it. Thank so, you. Uh, and you've okay. been to Japan, correct? Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, it, it is something that I would have expected to hear while in Japan and not really thought much of it just because it is. It is yeah, popular. yeah. And so. it's, it's, it's not like super unknown either. It's got 11 million streams on, I mean, uh, it's, on it's here. It's catchy, you know. I mean, yeah. it, it's definitely a very uplifting, very upbeat, happy, happy song kind yeah, of thing, yeah. you know. It's, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't mind it. And I guess they use it a lot in, like, car commercials, too, and stuff like that. Yeah, so. okay. So. It, over, over there, not here, but... Yeah. Yeah. It almost just reminds me of, like, that person who's, like, too bubbly that you just need to be like, yo, you need to back the fuck up. Like, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, Monday morning. Yeah, right. So, yeah. <laughs> I haven't had my coffee yet. Speaking of Japan, there's these things called maid cafes, which is basically a Japanese Hooters. Okay. Uh, so Josh would not be allowed to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, so it's a maid cafe where you pay, you you know, you can get a beer or whatever, and then the girls dress up in, like, you know, schoolgirl costumes or something like that, and they're super bubbly, and they talk to you, and it's a place for lonely Don't know what they're saying, because I can't. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, some of them speak English, so Maggie oh. and I did stop by there because mm-hmm. she wanted to go to a, a maid cafe. And I was like, all right, you want to drag me along to a Japanese Hooters, I'll go. <laughs> so, you have to twist my arm. But the, wings. the music was predominantly stuff like this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's it, it to me it is a little bit reminiscent of when I went there and, you know, when I got to travel and before this whole COVID bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, out of all of your guilty pleasures, this one was probably the most surprising, but also one that I enjoyed the most. Okay. So, Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Trevor. All right. Well, wow. your there turn you now, so. <laughs> Take it away. Your turn. Um, so speaking of enjoying the most, the song that I'm sure that you guys enjoyed the most uh, featured the very uh, uh, same singer that we were talking about last episode, Chad Kroger. Uh, oh, yeah. With Santana, mm. Why Don't You and I. Um, so now he's got two versions of this? There's two because there's one with a, a different guy. Alex because, something. Yeah, Alex Band or something, yeah, like, that, something like that. Who sounds a, a lot like Chad Kroger. Wait, Alex Band. He's yeah. the singer of... It's like a... Yeah. So when this song came out, there was like a dispute. So the this Calling. Was, yeah. There was some sort of dispute because there was another Nickelback album that came out and they didn't want to kind of take away from that. So he had to re-record something else. But I want to say that the single on the radio was Chad Kroger. Interesting. I remember hearing it. So, so when I searched on Amazon, the other version came up. Yeah. So I just listened to it because I'm like, oh, it's got to be the same song. Because mm-hmm. it was Santana. And it was. And I recognized the song. I knew it. And I could, in my head, hear Chad Kroger singing it because this <laughs> is the version I've heard. Yeah. 
So, I mean... I've never heard this song before. Really? really? Oh! This was... No, I have. Wait, the, oh. the chorus just came Good in. Good Lord! Wait. Yeah. It's say. This was big in my freshman year. I've only heard school. the Alex Band version. Yeah. I've never heard Chad really? Kroger sing on it. Okay. This yeah. is so... Yeah. This is like... In, this is weird to hear. That is so. the same song sung exactly yeah. the same. Yes. Just with yeah. two different people. Mm -hmm. This song like awoke something in me because I don't think I heard it since I was a child when it was on the radio. And I didn't think about it until yeah. Yeah. like a couple days ago when I heard it again for the first time. I was like, whoa. For me, this is a very nostalgic song. It was you yeah. know, freshman, sophomore year of high school. You know, this song was huge. You know, I mean, all the right reasons had come out a couple of years mm -hmm. back. You mm -hmm. know, Nickelback was very big. And uh, I, I'm a big Carlos Santana fan. I, I think that he's yeah. one of the best guitarists ever, and certainly mm -hmm. the best guitarist I've seen in concert. Oh, cool. You know, um, seen You've seen Santana? Yeah. Holy he shit. opened for the Allman Brothers. Oh, wow. Ooh, so that's good. That's it was awesome. a pretty good show. Um, couldn't understand a word he said. Um, <laughs> like he he clearly had, thing. yeah, the same reason, too. It's, it's the drugs. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but, man, could he still play guitar. Yeah. Um, and he, I don't know how Ozzy can still sing. Like, that's boggling yeah. my mind. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of auto-tune work and <laughs> editing. <laughs> he's, he's, still putting out, he's still putting out <laughs> singles. Yeah. But, I mean, Santana, I like Santana. I like the guitar work. Chad Kroger, the song plays well to his strengths, you know, <laughs> I mean. Quote, unquote. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's just, it was, I, I, I like listening to it. There's uh, another song on the album that. He was also featured on Into the Night, which I also like. It was really kind of a hard choice between those two. Mm -hmm. I chose this one because it was the more well known. Yeah. And um, he doesn't try too hard. Like no. Chad Kroger doesn't try too hard, so he actually works on this song. Mm -hmm. Like he's not straining. He's not trying to be like. Oh, yeah. I really think he's doing okay. Mm -hmm. It's just a more calmer version of his growl. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. still there. Yeah. It's a good way of putting it. Yeah. But, cool. I mean, it's one of those songs where, yeah, it's a guilty pleasure, and I like it, and if you don't, then... Too bad. Fuck off. Well, <laughs> no, when I heard this, it brought me right back to, like, remembering the song, hearing the song, yeah. listening to both versions, kind of comparing that they're identical and just literally yeah. swapped out a vocalist. Like, yeah. there's no other change. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, no, as soon as... By the name, I had no idea. As soon as I heard it, I was like, yep, I've heard this song. Yeah. <laughs> when, uh, Trev, when you texted us in the group text... And you said, I'm sorry to have to pain you with more Nickelback. <laughs> I thought you were going to go with the Chad Kroger, what's his name? Hero? Jersey. Oh, yeah. Josie Scott Hero. That's, yeah, from Spider-Man. Oh. Yeah. I thought Ooh, I was going to go with that song. Josie Scott from Saliva. Josie Scott, that's his name. Yeah, from Saliva. Saliva. That's another Saliva. garbage no, band. That would be a good one. Yeah. yeah. But, oh, no, this is, click, click, this is good. At, at least... At least Santana is like the saving grace of it. I mean, you can't, yeah. you can't go wrong. Yeah, that's Santana. what uh, really brings it all together for yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Very nice. Michael. All right, I'm going to go down my list. Oh, I already skipped around a little bit because I'm oh. saving one of them for last. Do I have to introduce Natterdays to all of you now? We're getting there. Yeah, one more and then, yes. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. I kind of want to go um, that's good. Oh, man. I really went tough with yeah. a few of these, but uh, let's go with, uh, I'll go with the next one on the list. Chandelier. Mm. I see ya. Yes. Okay. Something about her vocals in this song. I don't know if it's like just how she peaks in that chorus, and it's just so clean and so smooth, and it's just a really catchy song. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I mean, even though I can't sing like that, it's just fun to sing along to. Like, it's okay. yeah, they got that little pre chorus build up that's kind of like pumps you up, and then bam, she hits that note, and it's like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, I just really do like the song i like her voice a lot yeah this is one of her biggest songs mm -hmm. i like uh some of her other songs i think like chief thrills yep that w actually i went back and forth between those two. Oh yeah because okay. i think those are both like just really mm -hmm. they're you know what a lot of times too like when i hear a song and i can place it as being like oh you know this could be covered and done well in a different genre or something mm -hmm. it just means it's a good song yeah you know right. what i mean it does it doesn't it's not a pop song it's not a good pop song. it's just a good song in general right um so it lends itself to being like recreated and like you can mm -hmm. be flexible with it and do different things okay. and, i don't know something about this song i just i think it's primarily her vocals and her voice yeah but it's just well written my yeah. question is what happened to her she hasn't really put anything out, I don't, I don't think. Know. 
Um, let me see. What else did she put out recently? She put out an album in 2021. Okay. Did she? Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, it's a soundtrack for a, a, a movie, I think. Oh, that doesn't count. Interesting. But... Now, and she still really, does okay numbers. Don't really not dig the, the hairstyle and the look. Oh, you think oh that that over out? the eyes? The, yeah, the, those bangs are not but really helping her. I don't... Is that... That's her, though, right? Because so. in that but, picture, but no, her image was it hidden for years. It's all a long time. Yeah. There's a reason. I mean, look at her. <laughs> <laughs> but like, oh, she's got a, she's got a great voice. Really does. <clears throat> oh, she's been putting out music since 2003. Yeah. So if I if I remember correctly, I think she's been like a songwriter kind of um, for maybe. other artists, and then she finally kind of got her her, her, her just moment of fame. Same thing with like Megan Trainer. Like Megan Trainer was a songwriter for yeah, yeah. for okay. forever, and then she became you know her own artist. Yep. Yeah, I, I just I just I really do enjoy this song. Like this would be my guilty pleasure. Windows up, like blasted with some bass in the car, like <laughs> yeah. rocking to it, and then someone would look at me in the highway and be like, "Fuck off, <laughs> just keep going." <laughs> yep. So yeah, she's Australian. Interesting. You really hear it, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. All right, I want to jump into uh, some Natter Days? So, sure. All right, so um, I, I was really debating whether or not to bring this as my guilty pleasure because I don't feel guilty about it. Um, everybody else feels guilty about drinking it. Uh, I get okay. shit a little bit, yeah. I get shit a lot for drinking this beer. Um, but at the same time, other people drink it too. It's you know, delicious. I, uh, it is delicious. It is a very surprising, refreshing yeah. drink. I remember the first time we had one. Oh, yeah, in that very hot tub. It's true. Ooh, Ooh very scandalous. Romantic. And who brought it? You mean Jeff. More about this hot tub? Jeff. Oh, oh Jeff. Jeff. What do you do to this? This is definitely a Jeff drink. Drink. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, well, He brought it, right? Uh, yep. He, he had uh, an 18 rack of Natterdays. And we finished all of them. Yep. <laughs> it's, all of them. I mean. How many? 18? Between three of us. It, that's just it. In this one is, hot tub sitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a drink that you look down on, and then when you start drinking it, you can't stop. Yep. It's uh, I had a, a barbecue with some people over, just like a cookout sort of thing. Uh, I brought a, a thirty rack of Natterdays, and then most of my friends, for whatever reason, like Yinling. I don't know why. I brought yeah. twenty four Yinglings, thirty Natterdays. The next day, all of the Natterdays were gone, and I was left with twenty one Yinglings <laughs> to have to drink. <laughs> by myself it was I mean because they all said something about the natter days like oh sure you got natter days but guess what Everyone. they were yep, gone they're not the they here <laughs> so so uh, my that spring fling story that I've mentioned before um, I grabbed a 30 rack of these for that as well and uh, fun fact this was actually my first ever shower beer so Ooh, my first no. ever one, yeah I know. So this is uh, this is really bringing back some old memories. So. Okay. But, uh, I think yeah, that's so the theme of the episode. It's I did. Into, yeah. I did finish a whole thirty rack of these within like a day and a half or so. That's so impressive. Yeah. They go down. Smooth. Oh yeah. Yeah. They do. Yeah, their, yeah. their their rule to take it out was you had to put it in a solo cup. So I just put a whole uh, thing of it in a solo cup without pouring it out. I just put the whole can in there. And they didn't give a shit. So I was like, all right, whatever. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a good. I uh, I was glad you brought this. Cause, yeah, uh, it's a great beer. It well, is. I got plenty more, and I'm probably gonna end up getting one. So, <laughs> awesome. They triggered something. <laughs> awesome. yeah. There you go. I mean, it, it's really it just goes down. It does. Really well, well, I just remember because you combined. We were watching like Thursday night football or something, yep. and I remember because I had to go to work the next day. We downed an 18 pack of these, and we were dehydrated for being in the hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the most garbage next days I had ever felt. <laughs> I felt like absolute trash. Like I got hit by a fucking Greyhound bus from like six or seven Natter days, and they were delicious going down. It was just the combination. I remember how terrible it was, and I can still drink it. It was three dudes in a hot tub drinking Natter days, you know? Yeah, what can go wrong? It was a great combination. And there he goes. Go Get another, another one. one. <laughs> Anyone else want one? I'm good. I'm They're good at the moment. Um, okay. Also, they have a pineapple lemonade version of the Natter Days as well. So me and oh. Trevor were talking last night. <clears throat> Excuse and, me. Uh, I've been meaning to try them, but they only sell them in 12 packs. So yeah. You mentioned something to me about splitting them, and then Joe went and got the beers instead, which so I didn't say anything because... Oh, you... No, I'm, I'm talking, next, next time I, I see forgot. a 12 pack of, of pineapple Natter Days, I'll I'm buy it. Pineapple it and then, guy, yeah. but I said, ah, I'll go with it. I do anyway, hear it's just care. not as good, but... What is it, pineapple what? And lemonade. Yeah. Lemonade. This one's uh, strawberry. Yeah. Lemonade. You can't beat strawberry no. lemonade. Like, 
No, this is a good combo. It's a great combo. Yeah. And what a name, too. Natterdays. Natterdays. You know? They really just killed that. Yeah. They, they, and, and then they have um, uh, Seltzers, too. Yeah, they do. Natty Light. Of course. Yeah. Those names are good, too. Um, yeah. Aloha Beaches. Yeah, Aloha mm-hmm. Beaches. And... Um, Oh, God, there's so another one. The, lime, the Catalina lime Catalina mixer. lime mixer, right? How God can I forget? Damn. Yeah, wow. right. Okay. Yeah, they just—they're great with yeah. the marketing and the naming and everything. Yeah. I love it. I mean, they, they know their demographic. They know how to appeal to them. Uh, yeah. Mostly That's it. just frat boys, and they just—they yep. go for it. They go awesome. for it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, my song now. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit out of order. I'm going uh, sticking with the boy band theme. Okay. Bye bye bye. By NSYNC. Um, I chose this one for a slightly different reason. This song just slaps, in my opinion. This, I don't know. It, the, it, it. I just rock my head to it. It's great. Um, you sing along to it. It has a great beat, despite being a boy band song. And this is another one of those songs where I feel like a band can really cover it well, which is why I'm very happy that. Uh, we cover it, and yeah. it's one of our uh, one of our more popular songs when we play. The turning point in covering that song was yeah. when we got the keyboardist, and yes. he could hit those opening synth notes. Mm-hmm. It was game changing. Lights out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and much like I want it that way, it's mm-hmm. nostalgic. You know, I think I think it's a good beat and has that good like bass, the synth, the the the. Um, and uh, I think it rocks harder than people might think. So I put that on here. Yeah. And again, I, I had like a weird like boy band phase in my life. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's it's not a bad song, but it's it's like very much a staple of the times, you know. Yep. You know. Yeah. My only big issue is not with the song, but the album it's on. It's called No Strings Attached, but they have strings attached on there. Um, that is true. The hell are you doing it? There are hidden sync. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I don't. I don't hate it. It's just. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't really go out of my way to listen to much boy band stuff these days. But yeah. You know, I'm not gonna not gonna hate on it too much. No, right. No, but right. it's it's a jam when it comes out. It's a yeah, jam. I yeah. give it that. It, it was. It's this. As far as like rockers, it's this and larger than life, by Backstreet Boys. Yeah. If you listen to Larger Than Life, it's actually like a really. Rockin' song. It's got a like, solo it in it. Solo in it. Yeah. The drums are good. Um, it was kind of odd for being a boy band song, mm-hmm. which is kind of why mm-hmm. I, I think gravitate more towards those songs. No, it's that's not a bad one. Yeah, yeah. After all, we are talking about guilty pleasures. Yeah, it would so, make sense. You know, yes. it's not going to be the best songs ever that we're presenting today, but it's it's all about nostalgic and uh, yeah, you yeah. know what it means to us. Mm-hmm. Yep. I guess I will go next go ahead, Tom. Um, with a song that I guarantee you won't like, and I totally understand why. It's a song called Necromancer by <laughs> Cemetery. Yeah. Um, so let me let me preface this. Okay. Please, please um, do. So in many songs that we choose, there are kind of settings where you would listen to them, where they work. And in this one, I basically only listen to this while I work out. Okay. And... You know, it's over-compressed to hell, it swallows the whole mix, it's way too busy. Even if I listen to it while I'm doing something else, I lose track of what I was doing to kind of, like, focus on this song. Um, and if you couldn't tell from, like, the uh, the album we did before, Death Grips, um, mm-hmm. it's a little bit... I, I kind of like that kind of dark and tortured sound. Not all the yeah. time, but in certain scenarios. Um it's just so loud and consuming that it gives like a kind of macabre enjoyment out of it for me. Mm-hmm. And um, I understand it's a little cheesy with it, the way he kind of goes about it. And um, I usually don't admit too much to liking this, but it, it just pumps me up when I when I need it, and it doesn't really give me a, a second to breathe when I'm when I'm listening to it. So, in that in that instance when I don't want to think about anything else, so I'm working out. This this is the one I go to all the time. All right, yeah. When you said it was over compressed, it sounds like the song like already blew out the speakers. You know when you, when you hear it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I can totally understand that. Yeah, he's uh, very much every every EQ is is like boosted in this song. Yeah, right. It's really hitting on all frequencies. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit of a newer one. I think it came out this year. Um, let me double check that. Yeah, it did. So, um, 
he is. Uh, I, don't, I don't really like a lot of his other stuff. I really only. But it, it's and it's not just this song too. It's just this album in general. I'll throw in at the gym, and um, it just it pushes me. I don't know what it is about it. Something something dark about it, but I enjoy it quite a bit. All right. I wouldn't play this in front of my girlfriend or anything, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is a it's a song that I I uh, get how, to. How did you come across this song? So there's a music reviewer that I watch a lot called The Needle Drop. Mm-hmm. He gave this album like an eight out of ten for some reason. Oh wow! I have no idea why because I I don't think I'd give it that high high of a review, but um. He, he gave it that, and I usually watch his higher-rated ones, and um, that's how I, I found out about it. And, um, yeah, it's uh, definitely a, a, a dark album. Yeah, I mean, people associated with this search are Chainsaw Party, Skin Carver, and Crucifixion. They, those are all um, names of tracks Apparently, Necromancy like is the practice of magic involving communication with the dead. Yep. Um, had something to do with Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Yep. Yeah, it's just pretty fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and on all of his albums, like on the corners, they have just like pictures of dogs for some reason. I don't know if they're his dogs or if they're other people's yeah, animals. But here, here, the start of the music video looks like a. Oh, was a music video? I'm not. Well, seen I don't that. know. If, yeah, it's a YouTube video. I don't know if it's. Well, meant that's creepy. To be actual. It looks like some guys like. Like a security cam. Yeah, a security cam of him like robbing someone with a. Oh, oh well, yeah. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah, so, yeah. All I can um, say about that song is it had a lot of noise in it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when I want to like tune everything out while I'm there at the gym, that's definitely the uh, the vibe that I go for. Okay. Makes and sense. It's weird when I look at other people's like workout playlists, they have like like happy like pop songs in it, and I cannot understand how you can work out to that. Never understood country. I mean, I'll get it in general. But yeah. Like, work out the country. Like... Yeah. Yeah. Like that song Heat Waves that's that that's popular right now. I saw that in my friend's workout playlist. I was like, how the fuck do you listen to that? It's like yeah, a, I'm like it's a big, like a slower song. I'm big like hard rock metal kind of yeah. go to. This is this is what I go through for that. Yeah, this especially that opening track. It's called God's Light Burns Upon My Flesh. Yeah, I feel like I'm very get happy song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much where I'm at. So. Yeah, maybe in, maybe in uh, if I give it a bit longer of time. I won't be into it as much, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that one. The guilty pleasure, no. It is quite guilty pleasure. Trevor. Uh, so I'm gonna go with uh, Paramore Misery Business. Oh is my yeah, this is an interesting uh, guilty pleasure. It's uh, a guilty pleasure. It's it's it is tough because uh, I like Haley Williams as a singer. Mm-hmm. I think she's got a very powerful voice. Mm-hmm. Um, she was kind of the voice of that whole female pop punk thing mm-hmm. that went on in the you know early two thousands, um, but the the song itself is kind of you'd think that Nickelback wrote it you know <laughs> I mean the lyrics aren't aren't overwhelmingly great you know I mean it's just super catchy and you know her voice kind of carries the rest of the song through it and it's just got that kind of pump punk energy to it yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's like I, I think she's got better songs. This is certainly her most well known. Oh but yeah. I chose this one because it is, you know, it's it's a guilty pleasure. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> it's a song I would sing at karaoke if the bar was empty. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's got a great little guitar line though to it. Like yeah. It's not an easy song to play or sing or anything. Like no. it's well written. Yep. Better Just, I guess, nobody really wants to admit they like Paramore. I, right. I would gladly admit I like this song. Well, I, I, I mean, you could, I guess, I don't mean to cut you off, but, like, like you could like Paramore. I mean, I, you like Haley Williams more than you do Paramore, like, yeah. as Trevor said. She's a great That's vocalist. Fair. Yeah, I, I like this song. I think it's, a, like, if you were to play this for uh, people who like normal music, I feel like they would be like, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. I don't have no problem with this. So... Right. Um, yeah, no, I love this song. It's uh, I like it much more than the uh, Machine Gun Kelly cover. Album. I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> yeah, I know Machine Gun Kelly should have had some female vocalist. Yes. Like if he had, I know we said this in that episode, but Whoa. if he had Halsey. <laughs> oh yeah. On his cover, I think it would have hit a lot yeah. more. But um, it, it did not lend well for an all male version. It it, it just it just didn't. Mm-hmm. But um, no, this is a great song. Yeah, uh, it's definitely one of the top songs of that era and that genre. Definitely, yeah, good pick. It rocks. <laughs> Feel bad for her. She was starting to like break out. Like she had, 
she did that airplane song with B.O.B. Yeah. Yep. And then... She did kind of drop off a cliff, yeah, right? Yeah, you know? They had a good album in, like, 2017, um, Paramore itself, not them, um, mm-hmm. After Laughter. She had that song Hard Times on it. Okay, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. But... Is that the one with the butterfly on it? Yeah. No, no, no. That's uh, the one with, like, the weird, like, optical illusion fork. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. The fork. Yeah. Interesting. After Laughter. Got it. Mm-hmm. Other than Haley Williams, I don't really know much about Paramore. No, like, honestly, yeah. they're decent. I'm pretty sure she changed over the entire band like once or twice. Yeah, it's so. not like right. Yeah, it's not really guitar based as much. Anymore. She's she's yeah, the just, band essentially. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Everyone else is kind of rotating, mm-hmm. from what I understand. All right, so Michael, what you got? What you got uh, next for us? Yeah, one of two. I like both of them. Should we uh, do yeah. another drink? I believe it's one more track. One more track? One more track. Let's go with, uh, let's go four or five seconds. Yes! Four or five seconds by the best combination of artists in the world, Rihanna, (laughs) Kanye, and Paul McCartney. Paul Kanarki. I, uh, (laughs) I was caught a little off guard by this one. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. It's just a super catchy tune. I love this song. Like, Rihanna does a great job. Paul McCartney's just what guitar and bass on it or something. He I think it's just guitar. Is it just guitar? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just an acoustic guitar. And then the two guys, the people. There's, oh, some there's some other like instruments in the there, background. But... Yeah. And then you got Kanye, and, and I'm not oh, the God. biggest Kanye fan. Like, right. I'm not a huge, but in this he just like yeah. he does what's needed. He right. doesn't yeah. overdo it. He yeah. doesn't try to be too Kanye. Right. He just does it. <laughs> it, it and the chorus is like super catchy. Yeah. Easy to sing along to. Um, no, pretty solid lyrics. Yeah. Good vocals. I remember I was on vacation in Cape Cod once when this song came out, and the radio station I was listening to on my car. I like to do that a lot. When I go somewhere, I throw on like their local yeah. station and kind of get their flavor. They played a version of this with like a solid drum beat on it. it they like made a song out of it. Oh. I can't find it anywhere. I was so pissed. Interesting. I love it. But, no, this is a, a really good song. I remember you and I were together when we were talking about our guilty yeah. pleasures. And you threw this one out. I was like, oh, yeah, all right, all right. I, I didn't see it coming. I was caught off guard, too. Yeah, it comes in with that little synth, and then yeah, yeah, you've that got kind that of little section of change over. Mm-hmm. It's good, yeah. This it is. It's just a good song. It doesn't overdo anything. It's just kind of, like, straightforward. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just an interesting combination of people. Yeah, and very. It's, it's weird because it's like, it's nothing special, but no. it works. Yes. Right. Yep. So yeah, I enjoy this one. Yeah, it's a good one. Plays uh, plays switch strikes. Yeah. For sure. Everybody does. Like Rihanna hits a few high notes, mm-hmm. and then you got Kanye just kind of playing the game level for once. Yeah. You know, <laughs> being over the top. Yeah. I and didn't even recognize it as Kanye. Yeah. And honestly, you wouldn't even know Paul McCartney had anything to no. do with this. No. Nope. Yeah. Which is a little strange, but. Mm-hmm. There's names on there. That it is. Yep. What a combo, though. I know. Yeah. I mean, Rihanna and Kanye, you can, you yeah, can I see think they've done together, that but... Yeah, sure Paul McCartney each other Yeah, sure no, I didn't see that coming. And it didn't really even need to be him, either. You know? Like, yeah. anyone can pluck that guitar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. exactly. For, for, in that way. All right. Let's yeah. transfer to uh, Michael's drink. Let's do it, Mike. What, sure. what, what's your beverage? My guilty pleasure. Now... When it comes to flavor, brand, all of that, it's not a guilty pleasure. Right. Like, Dogfish Head, slightly mighty. Dogfish Head, great brewery. It's a low, ca- it's a, it's a, a, a IPA. I like how they do low cal, like local. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. I, I don't even know if that even yeah. has any purpose, but I like the way they put it. Uh-huh. Um, the guilty pleasure portion is that it is 95 calories, 3.6 carbs. Like, it's thrown at you like a diet beer yeah you know what i mean yeah and but it's got the flavor of a legit ipa Mm -hmm. so i guess my take on the uh take on the uh the the guilty pleasure part is that it's almost like like you said diet beer you don't want to be caught drinking diet coke instead Mm -hmm. of coke but i don't know it's just got a lot of flavor and it's good for some reason it takes tastes a little similar to natter days (laughs) <laughs> I think it might just be in your glass. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember I, I had this beer the first time out at dinner at a restaurant. And um, I saw it was like light. It was kind of hot mm. out. Uh, we were sitting outside. And I was like, oh, I'll try that. And I loved it. And this is like definitely a go-to now if I don't want to 
heavy craft or a heavy IPA. It's all I yeah. drank at our gig on Saturday. Um, I had, I had yeah. Three slightly mighties. Yep. Like just, I don't know. It's it's very. Did we have it at uh, the Three Eleven concert too? No, I went to a Hartford uh, Yard Goats game, uh, okay. and I had okay. it there. I had a big thirty-two ounce of yeah. this. Yeah. It's only four percent. Yeah, it's less than a Bud Light. Yeah, it's like a good Bud Light. It that's really, that's really how yeah. I'm looking at it, which is why I kind of labeled it as a guilty pleasure. Yeah. Of all the light IPAs I've had, and I mean, there's really just that many out there. Um, this is the best. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have a hard time. Like I know Trevor goes like. Drops back to like his core's light when he's trying to go diet and wants to still have a beer and things like that and just his go to low key and all that. Like this is and I always drink all day IPA was always my like purchase and go. Good beer for the price, but I'm, I'm kind of slightly transitioning to this as my like go to IPA because you can drink more of them low calorie, mm -hmm. low co alcohol content, just kind of a solid. God damn it, I'm over thirty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like that better than all day. Really. Yeah, I do. It's really good. It's pretty smooth. I'd agree yeah. with you on that. Yes. So, uh, we got uh, four more songs left. All right. Let's do it. Yo, Sefi. Mine? Yeah, sure. I saved... Oh, the best for last. The best for last. I mean, how, how could you not... Mm. Hire by fucking Creed. Oof. Ooh, I heard this song and I was like... Yep. Right. I should have. I should have put a Creed song on my right? guilty pleasures. Guilty mm -hmm. pleasure. I mean, we're talking Nickelback. We're talking oh. Limp Biscuit. Oh yeah. Creed is in there for. They're better than they're giving credit. For. Yes, they are. Right. Well, I was talking about like corny rock yeah. bands, but they are better than they are credited for. Yep. I get a lot of shit from, like my friends from home, my like high school friends, for they always like make fun of, fun of me for like liking Creed. I don't like Creed, but I like this song, but, mm -hmm. you know, they take it to the extreme. Human it's like Clay. A, it's a running joke. Human yeah. Clay. I have that album. 1999, if I, I, if I remember it. correctly. Um, Something like that. 1999. 99. Yep. Okay. Had that dude coming out of, like, the nothing. Yeah, he's kind yep. of falling. Yep. Uh, this song rocks. Um, the band, minus Scott Stapp, is tight. I love the band. They're actually Alter Bridge nowadays, and I'm a big Alter Bridge fan. And then also the guitarist Mark Tremonti has his own band called Tremonti, and they're kick ass. They're more heavier. Both bands are definitely heavier rock, which I'm glad they're doing, you know. But they kind of fell in the trap of this formulaic, like, you know, let's be that token We're going to see rock Tremonti. band. We are going to see Tremonti. We are. That's right, Excited. in November. I can't wait for that. It's going to be great. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to go to that show, not Daughtry. It wasn't Daughtry. No, it was Tremonti <laughs> and Seven Dust. Yes. Yep. Uh, but anyway, I mean, Creed Hire, this is a guilty pleasure in my eyes. I mean, yeah. this is, if it, yep. it makes a short list yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I can hear this song, like, once a month, and I'll be totally fine with it. Yeah. yeah. Like, if I hear it more than that, I'm going to start hating it. It's but, one of those songs that the longer you go without hearing it, the better it sounds when you do. Yes, right. it's like I a fine wine. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I feel like yeah. that almost is a lot of these songs. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Exactly, yeah, That's yeah. the whole point of it, yep. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Higher, this is the song they're known for. Yeah. This is like a sign of the, the song of the times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had to put it in my four. There's other songs that was very hard to like narrow it down. Yeah. But this had to make the cut. That's good. Yeah. Cool. Do you right. want to uh, introduce your beverage, Tom, so that we have the beverage while we finish up the last round? Sure, of yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, so my beverage of choice is uh, Twisted Teas. Mm -hmm. Twee! Um, yeah, Twee, if you will. Um, I get a lot of flack for liking these, and that's fair. They're, uh, you know, you can get better alcoholic tea uh, drinks. I like the uh, the Arnold Palmer Twisted ones. Oh, they yeah, have, those, are, are those are good. Um, but this, this, this is the classic. Everyone kind of says oh, like, "Oh, this shit. is the beer, or this is the drink you oh, have yeah, when yeah. you're in like middle school and you can't get any other drinks." Right. Um, but I don't, there's wow. something about it. I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna go every time to go get these because you know you're gonna have some kind of uh, the level of sugar yeah. in these. Yeah, yeah. it's they're it's, they're a bit you're high in the soda. sugar content. You're drinking a soda. Yeah, pretty much. But um, they're not bad. Yeah, every once in a while, there's a guilty pleasure. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna. Yeah. yeah. Every now and then. My favorite thing about Twisted Tea is that 
fucking mean guy. Oh, the dude that hit him. Yeah. The <laughs> and they're in the kid's convenience <laughs> store. And saying, hit me. Hit me. And the guy fucking slapped Boom. him with the twisted T can. Oh, and then yeah. someone remixed the video and did the ants marching yeah. Yeah, song to it. Yeah. With <laughs> I died. I can watch that over and over again. It's hilarious. Uh, Twisted tea. But yeah, I yeah, uh, I enjoy it. I'm an iced tea fan. There's just something in this that I can't. There's something off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. But But I get it because like like same thing with seltzers and all of it. There's something a little different because it's alcoholic. Right. Um and. You just kind of, once you get past that, you're like, oh, all right, it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, if I'm at, like, a, a larger party and they have just, like, a whole bunch of shit beers and they have this, you know, I'll, I'll gravitate towards that. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do a tweet. I got no shame. I'll yeah, yeah. <laughs> no shame. Yeah. I'm having a hard time, too, with, like, we've mixed so much shit right, right. now. Yeah. Like, Stomach's we went with, with me. <laughs> we went with Four Loco, Twisted Tea, Mango yeah. Seltzer, Natter Day, and an, and and an, an actual yeah. beer. IPA, a beer. And meatloaf soon. <laughs> <laughs> and two roads. Yeah. And the two roads. All the two, two roads, roads in there. In there. I yeah. Mean, yeah, and you weren't feeling great after the four loco to begin with. So. That was terrible. Yeah. 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 But I don't know. Yeah. My palate is not cleansed. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah. But, um, All right, Tom. Yeah. What so, song um, do you have for us? My, my last guilty pleasure song is uh, Hand Crushed by a Mallet, but it's the remix this time with Fall Out Boy, Craig Owens, and Nicole Dolenganger. So, um, we originally talked about the, um, the first Hand Crushed by a Mallet on our, uh, holiday episode, the Stocking Stuffers one, yes. I gave it to Joe, and, um, mm. I like that one, it's a, they're, uh, 100 Gex is a, uh, group that does, um, hyper pop songs, which are a bit kind of glitchy, chipmunk vocals, are a bit all over the place, and, um, we had already talked about that, but I did want to mention the, uh, remix of this with, um, Fall Out Boy, because they kind of take it in their own direction mm-hmm. and um i'm a pretty big fan of them in the original um but uh, there's there, something about this is just adds like a punkier and heavier flair to it to that like, kind of eclectic sound and i think it's a really interesting mashup especially when they get going in the second half when it's just yeah. them and that kind of screamed ending where they kind of bleep it over and over again mm-hmm. really i don't know it just it gets me going then i uh i really enjoy that and um it's one of the better remixes of a song that i've heard in a long time so I do like this more than the yeah. original because mm-hmm. I can hear the arrangement more in this. Like it's kind of mm-hmm. sectioned out mm-hmm. and it kind of builds. Yeah. And then the um, the intro with Fall Out Boy, the vocal. What's his name? Patrick Stump? Sure. Yeah. No, <laughs> the singer? Yeah. I think that's his name. Yeah. He's the Patrick. bassist too, right? Yeah. 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 No, no. That's Pete Wentz. Wentz. Oh, Pete Wentz. Pete Wentz. You're right. Um, I, I like his, I think his vocals lend, but he has such a distinct voice. Yes. Yeah. And I think they kind of matched well for this song. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, yeah. Gex. And then that next Gex. vocalist that comes in. That's uh, either Craig Owens. No, it's that's Craig Owens. Yeah, he, he almost it? has like a Paramore sound to the way they're playing. Like, mm-hmm. da, 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 da. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Just had like a kind of matched up with what you gave us before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, more of a punky. Yeah. My, yeah, yeah. My only kind of gripe I have with the song is when the the chorus bi- uh, like builds up into the chorus. The uh, the female vocalist on it is kind of just meh. Yeah, it's uh, it's very like empty. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah. yeah, doesn't hit as hard as I wanted to. Okay, I can hear that. But um, I still enjoy it quite a bit. And yeah, I think a hundred gex isn't really like a huge popular band. I mean, they they still have like relatively large numbers like. Um, oh, where are they? I mean, they still have like tens of millions of streams, but when it came out, it wasn't really, it kind of built a cult following. Mm-hmm. So when that album came out and I saw Fall Out Boy on it, like they're a pretty, you know, big name yeah. in the yeah. scene. So I was pretty surprised by that, but for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I just, the only downside to this song is I found it got very messy. Yeah. Like a lot started to happen yeah, and it, it almost yeah. fell back on like your necromancy song. Like it just got it's, very yeah. like distorted yeah. Yeah. and I was like, all right, yeah. now I'm Beginning was kind of cool, and then all of a sudden I started losing it, you mm-hmm. know? And that was my only, like, gripe, I guess, with the song, was, like, yeah. that last minute becomes so erratic. Mm-hmm. It was, like, I went from, like, oh, man, I can jam to this, to, like, what the fuck yeah. is happening, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the only place that it really lost me. Okay. Up until that point, I was, like, oh, I could jam to this. Yeah. yeah. But that's kind of that 100 Gex style, too. Yeah. They kind of put their own flair on it at the, yep. at the end, so... 
I kind of I enjoyed that part as well. Oh, is that where Gex comes from? His last name? What? You said Hunter Gex. No, no, no. That's I just said the name. I said Hunter Gex. Oh, they said Hunter Gex. No, uh, I, didn't I was like, oh, okay. The four no, no. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's coming back up. up to me. My glass still smells like four. four oh yeah, it it's smells terrible. like everything. I'm gonna have to freaking bleach them. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna right. say yeah, <laughs> if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's a formidable scent. Trevor, your <laughs> final guilty pleasure. This caught me off. Did guard. not see this coming. Love at all. it. Though. Did it? Yeah. I love it. Um, well, uh, might as well. Uh, you've you've got to admit it, right? It's uh, it's Ariana Grande's "Love Me Harder," <laughs> right? And uh, when I first, this is the first Ariana Grande song I ever heard. Okay. And it was black back when I was driving my POS Blazer, uh, which didn't have you know uh, any sort of like auxiliary input or you know satellite radio or anything like that. So. I just kind of switched radio stations, and eventually I started listening to the pop ones because the only other option was PLR, and <laughs> yeah. I heard those same 300 songs in the past <laughs> 10 years anyway, so... Change it up. Um, and I heard this song, and it, it, it became my favorite song on you know the pop charts just because it yeah. was so... Her voice was so clean, and it came together really well, and... Um, if if there's ever a guilty pleasure song to have for me, it's 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 this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This this is it's a good song. Definitely yeah. a guilty pleasure. I can't say I've heard it. I don't know if I've really? heard it. I know. I don't know if I've heard this before. I don't know. I it doesn't sound familiar to me. But yeah. I mean, it's Ariana Grande and then the weekend. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. the two of them together on this song. They, they, they did really a song on the album we did. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. Like, this was before The Weeknd was really big. This yeah. was one of yeah. his first, like, uh-huh. you know, kind of uh, entries. Yeah. And I thought he was really good on this song, too. And then I, I every other song he's been on, he just hasn't. I, I got to admit, you know, he's getting to a point where he almost annoys me. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not really, like, it's he's, just. He's the wish Bruno Mars. He, <laughs> <you know? laughs> I love that. That's so true, though. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. The yeah, he, he's Bruno gotten Mars. to, like, where he's, his songs are just becoming, like, annoying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not. His yeah. Super Bowl halftime show, I that was horrendous. Really enjoy. <laughs> Oof. The memes are funny though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like when he's running around in the fun <laughs> yes. house, and then yeah. he kind of did the gimmick thing and it's with the face and yeah, yeah, just yeah. all kind of I don't know but didn't didn't settle well, but yeah, no, this, this is a good song. It really nice. is a good song. Yeah, and you know we did an Ariana Grande album you know a few months back and it was not a bad album. Mm-hmm. Shit, mm-hmm. it was probably almost a, shit, just under a year. Almost ago. a year. It was January. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And uh, you know there were some good songs <laughs> on that album. Was that? It's a few months back. Yeah. It was, you know, she's got a great voice. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is, it's a good song. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Yep. Just didn't expect it from Trevor. No. Yeah, it was uh, a couple I know. Yeah, that, was That's the whole point of this it podcast. Was, it right. Was. I mean, that's it. It's just, it, it really, uh, I really struggled to actually put this on there just because it's, it, not you. It's, it's not me, but, <laughs> yeah. I mean, her voice is really something else. Um, oh, absolutely. The last one. Yeah, Michael. So, I don't know how much, I mean, Thomas being quite a bit younger than us, because this was like a like a fourth or fifth grade song for us. I think fifth grade. Yeah. And and for us, though, this was, this was big. Smooth Criminal, originally by Michael Jackson. Yep. Done by Alien Ant Farm. Their only notable song, absolutely ever. Yep, the, I love this song. Killed this mm-hmm. song. This is how you cover a song. Yeah. Really, like if if you are covering it in your own genre, this is how you do it. You yeah. you honor the original, but put your own spin on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is yeah. a really good cover. They just, and it's like, again, you like don't want to admit that you <laughs> right want to listen to this song. Like I don't know, but oh not, my god. How uh, how good can you be when you're under DreamWorks? Really? Yeah, that's yeah. their that's their record label. Like, like Shrek like, DreamWorks? Yeah. 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 DreamWorks Shrek Universal. And Alien and yeah. Farm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> that's a DreamWorks Hall Hall of Fame. It was on this. Good pick. Yes. Well done. Yes. I just So I don't know. Do how, how do we wanna close this? Do, do we say like our favorite from each other's or is that or is it just it? Um 
We can just... How about this? We'll go favorite overall, and then we can rate the drinks. Okay. Okay. Favorite Fa- overall of ours? Of songs? Of, of anyone's. Else. Well, okay. a- a- anyone that's not yours. I like that. that. Okay. I like that. All right. Yeah. And then we'll do... We'll rate the drinks that weren't ours. How about that? So that we're not uh, biased. Yeah. You can probably go... Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Favorite. Fair enough. Okay. okay. Um, all right. Favorite of, favorite of everyone else's? I gotta look. Of everyone else's songs, yeah. correct? Okay. I guess I will start. Um, I guess I got. I gotta say, "Misery Business." I really like mm. "Misery Business" as a song by itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I would even go as far to say it's not even a guilty pleasure. It's just a pleasure in general. Ooh, like if, yeah. I, pl- if okay. I played this around other people, it'd be like, "Yeah, this it's a good song." Oh, that's my, fair. You know, and maybe that's just from where I was raised. You know, my sister is always in like pop, that pop punk sound. I guess I only view it as a guilty pleasure because I sing it at karaoke when I'm really drunk. Yeah, I wouldn't see and you liking this dude, song. I want to see isn't, Trevor yeah. sing karaoke. I would love to see you sing karaoke one day. So, um, that's probably my favorite. You know, Smooth Criminal is also very good. And, um, I did like 45 seconds. But, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And then, um, in terms of the drinks, I gotta go Natter Days 1. Well, my in terms of the Natter Days. And then... I, I'd say Dogfish Head, the the locale one, and then um, White Claw. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. I like it. All right. Okay. Um, well, uh, I'm a little embarrassed because I can't even pronounce this song, but Thomas's Ninja song. Ninja Rebang Bang? Ninja Rebang. Uh, what, what is that? that, that is a, in, that's the English version of it. Okay. Ninja Rebang Bang by Ninja Rebang Bang. Kiari Pamu Pamia. Uh, to say I was caught off guard by this song <laughs> is a drastic understatement. <laughs> um... But you know what? As I, I, I traveled to Japan, and well, let's face it, I'm a closet weeb. So you know, I mean, uh, this song. Everything's coming out on this podcast today. <laughs> this song, really, I mean, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking, I'm in. Uh, I haven't traveled in over a year. Yeah. You know, and it really is one of my hobbies. I loved going to Japan, and this song just kind of brought me back to when I was there. You know, it, it's catchy. It's got that you know, that that really Japan weirdness to it, which mm-hmm. you know, it's you think that it's weird until you're there, and then you're like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that. That is my favorite. But I mean, uh, Creed and Alien Ant Farm both put up a pretty good fight. Mm-hmm. Those, those, <laughs> a those sentence you don't say often. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> uh, what are you ranking your drinks? Rank them. All right. Well. I guess I gotta go based on guilty pleasure and twisted tea for me. Uh, okay. Thomas, I'm, I'm giving Thomas all the credit Thank today. You, Thank you. Uh, like White Claw, I like more than twisted tea, but I don't really see it as a guilty pleasure because I'll drink it. It's a pleasure, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I like twil- twisted tea. Um, I'll give White Claw number two. Dogfish head, I just don't see it as guilty pleasure. I enjoy it, yeah. but I mean, I, I wouldn't even say that it's a guilty pleasure. It's a beer that you enjoy. And, right. Yeah. You know, and. Yeah, like I said, I threw it in there because of the calorie aspect, I guess. Like, looking at it, I look at it as like a diet IPA. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, as someone and, um, who drinks a lot of. And I drink a lot IPAs, of IPAs. So it, for me. It, it would be yeah. like, yeah. I'm ashamed, like, you know. It would like, be almost yeah. equivalent of drinking a Bud Light for you. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I guess yeah but you're sense. not. You're right, not, right. Really nice, exactly. You know, yep. you're drinking a, a pretty good beer. The one that it's like, I'm not trying to smuggle it out of the supermarket, hoping that nobody sees me like I do with Natterdays. Yeah. I don't, but you know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do with like Ocean. twisted teas. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, I don't know. makes sense. So well, you should have seen me at the liquor store today. <laughs> 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 Buying I bought, the shit. <laughs> I bought. If if I bought the the tweez, that would have been a case. Yeah, yeah. I got you out of that. But one. I bought. <laughs> Natter days. Me, you know, beard, bigger guy. I, I bought Natter days. I bought White Claw, and then this was like the only maybe like decent, credible yeah, yeah. like yeah. beer. The dog shit. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but I it was the most three like random. Well, like one of the ones stuff. I would have went with would have been the fruit punch. You're like truly, yeah. But the problem is, you know, there's so many flavors, and we were already doing a seltzer, and I was right. like, I didn't want to. Add to it, so I yeah. kind of took the different route of like I'm an IPA That's a great guy. Pick. Uh, all right, my all right, guilty Mike. pleasure song. Uh, I the best of everyone else. Yeah, I'm going to go with "Why Don't You and I" from Trevor with Chad Kroger. <sighs> wow. You know what it was about that? It was the fact that I saw it, had no idea what it was, heard it, and went, 
oh damn, I remember that song. Yeah. Like it just came back to me almost to the point where I could almost sing it. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't quite know the lyrics, like, but I knew the melody. I knew the, 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 all of it. I was just like, wow, I, I remember was... this song and it was so good. I'm like, I remember, yes. I'm yeah. sensing so, a smooth series cover in the ooh, future. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if I can pull off the Santana guitar. Remember, I'm a fake it till we make it. We'll let, we'll let Kevin do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let Joey do it vocally. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So yeah, that was uh, that was probably the one on there because you like Misery Biz, Turn Up the Radio, Love Me Harder. Like I knew all those songs. Right. This one just hit me in a different way because I was like, oh, in the I balls, you kind of like cupped your balls. A little bit, yeah. Like it, okay. Like like Shadow it was like Kroger, Kroger on yeah, one like, and like Santana went, on the other. Wow. Yeah. It's like a lightning bolt hit the tip of your penis. It, that was the guitar solo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It was. <laughs> it's um, a good guitar solo. Yeah, yeah it I just it caught me, it and is. I was like, "Damn, it's just good." <laughs> um, as for my beverages, uh, Natterdays top it off for me. So this is so like he gave it all to Tom. Yeah, I'm giving it all to him. Yeah, Natterdays were my one. I do enjoy a good Natterday mm-hmm. or six, especially yeah. when you're with two other dudes <laughs> in the hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> clothes. <laughs> Bathing suits. Yeah. Okay, okay. You touch um, toe a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of, of a small hot tub, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can't not. <laughs> okay, fine. It was the bathtub. <laughs> uh, White Claw will be my number two. I'm not a huge fan of the mango quite as much. I'm more of a black cherry yeah. guy. But uh, Twisted Tea is just... I struggle with those. Like, if yeah. I drink one of them, that is enough Twisted Tea for me. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. Uh, any more than one's a struggle. So, yeah, Natter Day... Then the white claw, then the twisted tape. Okay. All right. All right. My top song. I'm going with Smooth Criminal. I think that's the one right. of everyone else's that just slaps the hardest. I just like sl- saying slaps. I think that's oh, a good word. Slaps. slaps. It slaps. Uh, I will say Misery Business put up a fight. Cascada put up a fight. And um, four or five seconds. I like that song a lot yeah, too. Yeah, I think we got to throw out Cascada as an honorable mention yeah. for all of us. Yeah, we, that was. We were all jamming to that song. Yes, when we it were. Came on. <laughs> yes, we were. Yep. But uh, Smooth Criminal takes the cake. Um, as for, by the way, I'm 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 a little disappointed. None of my songs were chosen as, as, as higher as an honorable mention. It's okay. Sure. All right, good. it's okay. It's okay. I don't. It's I don't. I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah. need the chair. I'm over. I'm over. I'm over. It's fine. Fun. Moving on. Put up for me. That's yeah. true. That's true. Thank you, Trev. As for my drinks, I'm going to rate... Um, see, I'm not going to rate them in terms of guilty pleasure. I'm going to rate them in terms of how I like them. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, Dogfish Head, uh, Slightly Mighty, number one. Natterdays, definitely number two. And the, the Twee... There's something in it. it. Tastes like I'm drinking cologne. Oh God, perfume. Right? Perfume? perfume? Right? Perfume? Like it's a lady's, kind of, yes. like sweet Gertrude's perfume or something like that. Like, it you tasted just, like that. Like if I got, that. like when grandma sprays it in the living room and you get a little bit on your tongue. Like you that's kind of what the, it t- That aisle in Target, you just start drinking it. Yeah. Um, but I guess in terms of like a guilty pleasure, it's natty, natterdays all day. But in terms of how I like them, drinkability... I'm gonna give slightly mighty the uh, the nod. Although we did all seem to enjoy Natter Days, pretty uh, yes. pretty uh, Natter yes. Everybody does, but nobody admits it. <laughs> it's like the perfect guilty pleasure. It really, it is. really is. Yeah. It really is yes. the best possible. One. So if we had to like average it all together somehow, yeah, I think episode wide, Natter Days, Cascada are the walkaways. I okay, so. guilty pleasure drink. Guilty Pleasure song. I think so. Well, there you go. Hops yep. and Bob podcast. Guilty Pleasures. Yep. Well done, boys. Well done. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Trevor, for uh, for coming on these last couple episodes. Yes, yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Quite My pleasure. You can invite me on any time. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, next yep. episode, episode fifty-five. Fifty-five. Yes. I guess a little little scheduled shuffle. Yes. So um, uh, Alvarium, our uh, mm-hmm. uh, a brewery that's local to us. We all uh, Rocket Pop. We yeah, did, yeah, we, yes, did, we yeah. did their rock and, and pop, Starman, and we did Starman. Oh, yes, wow, yeah. um, they well, just came out very recently with a Wu Tang sour, a uh, fruited sour that has uh, citra hops, tangerines, uh, vanilla, and some tang powder. And apparently, it's really tang really good. powder. Yeah, wait, tang in it? like with the spaceship monkey and tang powder. It no says it right here. Oh, it says tang powder. That's wow. what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. What's the beer called? What it's called it? the Wu Tang Sour. The Wu Tang Sour. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so it just came out very recently. I went to the brewery to go pick it up. So mm-hmm. um, we're gonna go do that. And to pair, we gotta do Wu Tang. So we're doing uh, yeah. Thirty Six Chambers okay. by Wu Tang. They're uh, most popular album by, uh, by a long shot. So um, it's a very good album. Can't wait to uh, to bring that on to the. I don't think I've album. ever listened to a Wu Tang album. Me neither. I'm excited. Ever. I'm, I'm excited for the beer. I'm excited the Rizza, for that the album. Rizza, old dirty bastard. Yeah. Rack one. Yeah. Yep. Inspect the deck. Yep. Method Man. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. So um, oh. look forward to that. Um, that's about it. Absolutely. Sweet. Well, thank you for listening. This yeah. has been a lot of fun. Great yes. session tonight. Uh, oh, Hops about podcast on Instagram and Facebook. We're streaming on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Want to thank Trevor, our good thank friend, you. for coming back for a couple episodes. My pleasure. Always yeah. welcome Your back. I think you've officially uh, peaked as the token most guest. Uh, yes. Reoccurring guest. Four episodes. Four episodes. Yeah. Right. That's well right. done. Yeah. So. so thanks again, Trevor. For Mike and Tom, I've been Joe. We'll see you next time. Peace.